Hi everyone, my name is Johnny. I work as a solution architect for Red Hat. And today I thought that I'd show how we can run uh, our application across uh, different footprints. So this scenario I had in mind to demo is that, let's say you're a company or organization or an individual and you have some kind of an environment. It might be a data center or you know, you're running application in a, in a cloud context or public cloud context. But the request comes in to move that application and run it on a, another location, another footprint. Uh, maybe it's an edge device running on you know, another location like a train, a bus, or something like that, or, or a factory, or a remote office, or some kind of, of, of smaller footprint, if you will. So you don't have a, a full-fledged uh, data center at that location. To uh, do this demo, I used a couple of different components. So in the center, we see OpenShift, or uh, actually it's code-rated containers. So code-rated containers is an all-in-one installation of OpenShift, and OpenShift is Red Hat's uh, enterprise Kubernetes distribution. And we are also making use of Ansible Automation Platform um, that we will make use to um, create the automation necessary to deploy our application out to the edge device. And the edge device is, is then a RHEL node. And on that node, we're gonna make use of a, a couple of different components, one being systemd uh, that manages the, the upstart um, of the operating system. And we're gonna make use of Podman, which is the container runtime. And I'll also show some aspects of Red Hat Insights. Uh, as you can see, I have my environment up and running. So to the left, you see my web browser running uh, Ansible Automation Platform. And to the right, you see I'm logged into code Ready Containers, our OpenShift environment. Uh, I do have a demo script that I will run and I'll walk you through what's going on in the background. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my local laptop as a demo environment. So CRC there is, is uh, code ready containers or OpenShift and then Ansible is, well, Ansible. Uh, so first we are gonna need an edge device. So I will create a virtual machine. So I'm just using a script to create a VM called Edge One. Uh, it's gonna have 20 gigs of disk, two CPUs, two gigs of RAM, and it's gonna be based on RHEL 872. Uh, and just to go through what the script does, so first we're gonna create a new project called Minecraft. So our application in this is, uh, demo is gonna be Minecraft. Uh, I will also make use of HAProxy to front the, the Minecraft server, uh, just to show that it can be a more complicated application. And then we're gonna allow anonymous access to uh, the registry so that our node can pull the image. This is more to simplify the demo. In a production environment, you would you know, use some kind of authentication. And then we're gonna create a build. So while I go through this, let's just uh, kick off the script here. Uh, let's see here. So now we see to the right that the project is actually created. We can also go into this here and just to see that it's going to create a, what is known as a build config in a while. So uh, first of all, we added the unauthenticated uh, access so that an anonymous user can log in. And now we have created uh, something that is called a build config. And a build config is basically uh, an object that knows how to combine a uh, couple of different components into a running container image. So in this case, we're using the Docker strategy and it's gonna clone from this GitHub repo to, and basically done a, run a Docker build against that uh, cloned, co cloned content. So we are creating two uh, Docker builds in our uh, OpenShift, um, contain, um, OpenShift cluster. So the first one is then the HA proxy Minecraft, which is basically a, a HA proxy instance that tries to connect to a backend server, which is then Minecraft. So these two containers are now being built on top of the cluster. And then we're gonna add a build hook. So this is a post commit uh, build hook. So what happens is that when we trigger this build, uh, it will call out to the Ansible Tower REST API to launch a job uh, that is, is created in the Ansible Tower instance. So uh, while those builds are running, I'm actually gonna continue the script over here. So this is adding the 
the post commit build hook to these build objects. So the next time we create a build, at the end of that build, it's going to call to the Ansible Tower instance to um, start that job. So just to show you guys how that looks, I'm going to log in in my Ansible Tower instance. And I'll show you my jobs. So what I have is that I have a template called push Minecraft HA proxy. And this job is what is going to be kicked off when we create uh, or when we launch the builds in, in, uh, in OpenShift. So the builds are now done. So let's check one of these out. So we now have a container that is, has been built in OpenShift. So we could pull this um, container image now uh, to this environment. But let's kick off this build again. So at the end of this, we're going to see the post commit hook, and it's going to start the Ansible tower job that is going to deploy the uh, environment. So if you go to build configs, we can go to the Minecraft server and we can click start build again. So now we can also follow along what's what's going to happen. So if we go to the jobs page. So again, the on the right side, we see uh, the build starting. So it's gonna clone the GitHub repo down to the uh, build environment. And then it's gonna more or less do a Docker build to this content. So it's gonna follow the instruction that is in that Docker file to produce a uh, container image. And as per the last part of that, before the image is pushed to the registry, it's gonna call out to the REST API to start this uh, push the Minecraft HA proxy uh, Ansible job. Uh, let's see here. Yep, we're good to go. So while this is running, I will log into what is known as uh, Insights or Red Hat Insights. So if you go to cloud.redhat.com, um, Insights is part of the subscriptions of RHEL. So we can see um, systems that has been registered to this environment. And Insights represents Red Hat's approach to doing proactive support. So the, the background or the story around Insights is that, you know, someone looked and saw that in, you know, large degree of the, the instances when someone calls Red Hat for support, we were already aware of this challenge or problem. So if someone, someone other customer had this problem and we were already aware of it and a fix actually existed. So someone came up with the brilliant idea of, hey, what about we proactively notifying our customer about this potential solution to their challenge? Uh, just as a caveat here, if you look to the right here, we see the run curl command that is going to trigger the job. So if you go over here, we're going to see the uh, the job starting. And as you can see here, push Minecraft HA proxy is actually uh, starting. Let's see. So we see here that, yeah. So it's gathering facts. And we see that it has found our, our virtual machine here, edge1.home.lab. So let's continue the discussion around uh, insights. So anyway, the the if you register your your rel server to insights, it will proactively notify you around known problems or issues that we are aware, aware of at Red Hat. So it's going to be registered, and it's at some point going to show up in your in your inventory. So the basis for this uh, demo was actually a blog post. So I want to just highlight that. So if you look at, uh, if you Google for systemd and podman, one of the first articles is going to be running containers with podman and shareable systemd. So we're deploying to an edge device, which is RHEL, but we still care about, you know, things like what if the VM crashes and restarts? How do we make sure that our container is up and running? And if, you, if you're aware of how podman works, you would know that it is a, um, it's running, it's not running as a daemon, so it's daemonless. So how can we make sure that the container restarts when the VM comes up? So we're making use of systemd to do that. And this blog post goes through to how you can create a, a generic uh, systemd unit file to deploy a container to a system. And that's what we're making use of. As we can see here, the, the job is progressing. So the first thing that's happened here is also that it's uh, running a registration. So it's register uh, for a, an entitlement or a subscription. 
And once that's done, it's going to go towards the insights. So let's take a quick look at the uh, playbook itself. So, and the playbook is really simple. So the deploy HA proxy here, what it does is register um, the machine. And I'm not showing that because I have passwords in that file. And then in the role section is where it becomes interesting. So it's going to include the role. So this is where the magic happens or magical magic, but anyway. So if you look at tasks and main, this is basically what is going on. So first what happens when the system has registered is gonna install the podman. And then it's going to do basically a Docker pull or podman pull against our uh, OpenShift environment. And if you see, if you see here, the apps-crc.testing, it actually corresponds to our URL up here in, in our OpenShift environment. And then it's gonna lay down these systemd unit files that will make sure that our container is up and running on the system. And that is basically uh, what goes on. So very simple. Now we see that the Insights client has uh, or is installing and we should be able to if we go to um, the inventory, we should be able to see that showing up now. And now it's progressing to the next step, which is in then installing Podman, as I showed in the uh, playbook. But if we go back here and refresh the page, we should be able to see our node up and running or being registered. And there we go, H1. Uh, so uh, some, some more information on insights. So the first information we do is some, some overview information. So facts about the systems, you know, what type of, of um, capacity, memory, CPU, stuff like that. Um, and then there's a couple of different sections that, you know, I'll quickly run through. So advisor is, you know, what it sounds like if we have any advice for this specific system, which there aren't any as of now. Uh, the vulnerability tab represents uh, security issues or vulnerabilities that we think is important for you to be aware of. So if we, you know, expand one of these, we can read some more information about that specific CVE. So this specific one is, is about cryptography in one of the packages installed in the system. Uh, and then we have compliance. So if there's any policy created for the system, if it's, uh, um, if it's compliant to that policy you created and we haven't created one. And patch represents if there's any other packages that might fix you know, known bugs or, or, or issues with the system, we can find out more information about that as well. So this represents how we would long-term manage because this, this demo is showing one machine, but what if we, if we have 50 or 100 or maybe even thousands? So insights allow us to proactively manage all of that. And we can also fix this. So if we would like to, we could you know, select all of these and we could remediate with Ansible. And this would create a playbook that would have the instructions that would fix these uh, issues on the system. Also, as part of the playbook, we deployed something that is known as, or we enable something that is known as cockpit or the web console. So if we now log on to the Edge One server, we can actually manage the server through the web UI. Uh, just to show you, so uh, even if you're not a, you know, uh, you've, you've been working with Linux for, for a long time, there's a, uh, a way for you to manage the system um, through a UI. Uh, so this is just an example. You can show some, you know, performance metrics, how's the system uh, behaving, what's the CPU and memory consumption at the moment. You can do like uh, access the logs of the system and you can access these different uh, log items. So you can do some basic troubleshooting and start understanding what's going on of, of the system. You can do also some network configuration. So let's say you want to configure the network in a certain way. Um, also, if you want to manage the accounts of the node and also access the terminal of the system. And if we look at our job here, the job is actually done. So it has now deployed our container to the local node. So let's see how that looks. So if we do a podman PS, which is basically a Docker PS, we can see that the containers is up and running. And if we want to look at the systemd unit files, we can also find those um, over here. So we check on services and we filter for Minecraft you can see that we have our two systemd unit files uh, deployed to this system. And as a last note, let's see if we can launch our Minecraft 
client to connect to this newly deployed server. Hit play. It's going to start the client. So my system is running low on resources at the moment, so it's taking a bit longer here. And we do a direct connect, and we see edge1.home.lab, port 80, and hit join server. And we are able to access our Minecraft server deployed to our edge device. And that is it. Thank you everyone for your uh, time with this demo, and I wish you a good day. Thank you, bye.